Well, better late than never, I'm finally bringing you guys my review of Ryzen 5. Because let's be honest, not all of us actually need that sheer amount of rendering resources offered by those Ryzen 7 and 9 processors. The majority, after all, I believe, is looking more for some kind of all-rounder CPU that first of all is good for gaming and, if needed, does perform okay in more demanding aspects, such as rendering or streaming. And very important, the CPU should be affordable while offering all that. That. And we might be looking exactly at a candidate of this type today. We are of course talking of the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. This one brings 6 cores and 12 threads to the table and should be one of the best price performance value CPUs out there in the market. That is if we don't look at deals of previous generation models or go for used CPUs. Right now the Ryzen 5 3600 can be had for roughly 195 to 200 US dollars. Sometimes a little less, other times a little more than that. I'll soon also be uploading my review of the 3600X, but what can I tell you right off the bat is, the conclusion will be similar to what I've said about the Ryzen 7 3800X. But oh well, today it's all about the 3600 non-X version. And I don't necessarily want to go for sensational wording here whatsoever, but we might have to ask ourselves whether or not Intel even seriously stands a chance against the Ryzen 5 3600 when it comes to the price to performance performance ratio. Included this time around is a pretty small stock cooler by AMD. This one's named Wraith Stealth, but right away I can let you guys know this one's not so stealthy as the name suggests. More on that later. Of course I will mainly be testing with an all-in-one liquid cooler, in this case with the Deepcool Castle 240EX, a really nice cooler I gotta say. But of course I will also be showing you results I achieved with the stock cooler. While completely overkill for a processor of this caliber, I will once again be testing with the ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard. I know, I know, it's so ridiculously overkill, but then again, I do not own that many boards for my Ryzen testing. It would certainly make more sense to go for those cheaper, older X470, X370, B450 or B350 boards, as long as the BIOS is updated for Ryzen 3000. But it has come to my attention, we soon could be expecting motherboards featuring a B550 chipset. Such would support the 3000 series natively out of the box. Somewhat comparable in pricing with the Ryzen 5 3600 is Intel's i5-9600K. It's a 6 core 2 but doesn't come with hyper threading, meaning we only get 6 threads. But it needs to be said, for the 9600K unlike AMD's 3600 costing about $200, you need to shell out slightly more for the 9600K, we are talking of $240 to $250. But I'm not really that type of guy that only cares about specs and how many cores each processor has. At the end of the day, all that matters is offered performance per dollar. A big improvement with the Ryzen 3000 series is the memory controller AMD tuned a lot. It now doesn't simply allow for higher clocks, but we are also promised better RAM compatibility. Still there are limits when it comes to AMD's Infinity Fabric, so that anything over 3600 or rather 3733 MHz effectively doesn't lead to any performance gains and can in fact reduce it in a worst case scenario. Needless to say, I won't be making use of AMD's automatic overclocking feature called Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO for short. PBO cannot be considered stock. Same thing with MC over at the Intel platform. Now here are the clock speeds, tested with the liquid cooler as well as with the included Wraith Stealth stock cooler. With all cores at full load, with the AIO cooler I achieve a maximum of 3.975 GHz, which also happens to be the average more or less, when it doesn't occasionally drop down to about 3.95 GHz. With the Wraith Stealth, to my big surprise, we get a higher maximum clock speed, exceeding the 4 GHz mark, although it only happened once. What tells us more is the average, which is at about 3.875 to 3.9 GHz. So indeed, slightly lower clock speeds with more inferior cooling. The max clock of just a single core, with liquid cooling in my case, happens to be 4.125 GHz. That's roughly 4.1 GHz with the stock cooler. And yes, I know that question's coming, no, the dancing 
Dancing Queen ABBA BIOS at the time of testing has not been flashed. All my tests were carried out before that BIOS version was released. So yes, I know my results therefore aren't completely up to date, I'm not arguing, but some of you seem to misunderstand the whole issue with those boost clocks. This whole widespread issue mostly only affects the single core clock and then we're just talking of a couple megahertz more, so the improvements coming with the ABBA BIOS are barely noticeable at all when more cores are utilized, which is the case most of the time. And from my point of view, I do not have the time and energy to carry out all the tests all over again. Something like that can't be completed overnight, as some people apparently assume. I'm sure you've already heard other channels talk about how long testing takes. Oh, and before I forget, I also wanted to compare what the cooler does for the clock speed in game and shadow of the Tomb Raider. On average, I managed to get 75 megahertz more out of the CPU without touching anything. However, it's not that big of a deal. So with that said, let's not waste any more time, take a look at these cool results I got with this CPU. So right away I can say, hands down the Ryzen 5 3600 is a super attractive and well positioned CPU in its price range. Sure, depending on who you ask, $195 is still lots of money, but I can confirm the 3600 indeed is a true all-rounder, a CPU that pretty much can be used for anything while not being perfect at any of the tasks thrown at it, but it can do all of those well enough. Of course one, first of all, shouldn't necessarily be ignoring the used market for even better price performance deals and secondly previous gen hardware can turn out to be super attractive as well in terms of pricing. Just look at second gen Ryzen but that can be said over and over again which is why I prefer to just stick to the latest stuff, the new stuff for my reviews. Something comparable price wise with the Ryzen 5 3600 would be Intel's Core i5-9600K even though that one does cost a few dollars more. Nonetheless it can be said the 3600 when it comes to raw performance in multi-core workloads wipes the floor with the 9600K and that is despite both sporting 6 cores, well AMD CPU comes with SMT, therefore 12 threads. The 3600 and rendering aspects often does match the more expensive $360 Core i7-9700K 8 core, that is pretty remarkable. But it sure needs to be said the 3600 isn't always faster than the 9700K when it comes to rendering, but it's impressive enough considering the huge difference in price. So that's where AMD is shining right now. Where things aren't particularly looking as good for AMD is gaming. No doubt for gaming a great CPU, but we need to realize that even with the non-hyper threaded i5-9600K in many game titles, Intel still does take the lead. 
What should not remain ignored though are those 1% lows, the minimums in game. This is where AMD on the other hand manages to shine in more than a few instances and that sure can lead to a smoother gaming experience all in all. But that depends on the game. I believe the reason for that in the case of the i5-9600K is the lack of hyper threading, which is why there might be a debate when it comes to future proofness. We after all do not know for sure where we are heading with the development of games. But it certainly is a fact if you just want a game, you don't really need to get yourselves a more expensive Ryzen. Sure, the frame rate does drop by a few percent as opposed to what we are getting with a CPU such as the Ryzen 7 3700X, but we need to look at it this way. The $195 Ryzen 5 3600 does beat AMD's previous flagship model of the yesteryear, the 2700X, and that one can't be considered to be bad for gaming either. So yeah, the Ryzen 3000 series also does manage to impress when it comes to power efficiency, power consumption. In the case of the 3600, while it does draw a couple more watts than Intel's 9600K does, given the kind of raw performance we get, almost matching the i7-9700K, the power draw can actually be considered amazing. It's just those idle results that look slightly terrifying. But I discovered this is what happens when you pair Ryzen 3000 with Nvidia's Pascal graphics cards. My theory is it's some kind of a driver conflict between graphics driver and AMD's chipset driver. If you go ahead and pair Ryzen 3000 with, let's say, a new Turing card, we are looking at an idle power draw that exceeds Intel by roughly 10 watts. That's what I wanted to let you guys know. The temperatures, given this is just a 6 core, aren't exactly low, but they are manageable with a decent air or liquid cooler. The included Wraith Stealth stock cooler by AMD is a little underpowered for its task here. No wonder with so little aluminum to work with. This is where AMD apparently wanted to save some money. But that's not to say the 3600 cannot be cooled by the Wraith Stealth. It however also isn't necessarily the quietest, but it's okay. In all fairness, the Wraith Prism, the one being included with the 3700X, in my opinion, is noticeably noisier. And yeah, are there any concluding words I have to say? Something that could make the choice easier for those of you that are unsure of which CPU they should go for. The bottom line is, if all you want to do is game and you only care about the higher average frame rates, you probably should go with Intel. Even though at this time with you having to pay $240 or more for a 6 core without hyper threading, does appear a bit risky to me. Now we are back to the topic, future proofing. So don't take my word for that. We might as well be fine with just 6 threads the next few years. Who knows? For all those that want a CPU that does perform well enough in pretty much all given tasks tasks without going for previous gen hardware, I'd definitely recommend going for the Ryzen 5 3600. You aren't that much slower with it, with a high-end graphics card compared to Ryzen 7 or even Ryzen 9, and even when it comes to multi-core workloads, the 3600 doesn't do too bad. Definitely faster than what the i5-9600K brings to the table when it comes to raw performance. So while I don't really like saying that since it will upset some fanboys, but this time around, there is no way out, I honestly see no good reason to go with Intel in this price range. At least not if there aren't at least 12 threads involved. Sure, I made some new enemies now, but I want to stay as objective as possible. I'm even going this far and I'm saying AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 from a price to performance perspective happens to be the best one out of the whole new Ryzen 3000 lineup. Never before have I dared giving a CPU my super rare platinum award, but the 3600 in my opinion really deserves it. The overall package is fantastic. And with that said, thanks so much for watching.